Okay. I paste a link in the chat box to the attendance link. Now, let's go to share screen. I'm going to share my screen. Please speak for those yang tak boleh nampak I punya screen ke atau ada apa-apa nak tanya, boleh 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 stop me. Okay, don't worry. You can speak. <laughs> Since we are having an online class, so I don't know either you are listening or you are sleeping or what. <laughs> Okay, so uh, for those who already get into my Google Classroom, you can, what you can do is, you can copy this thing. Okay, before that, once you are in your Google Classroom, you might see the plus button sign on top of the right corner beside your apps, Google Apps button. Okay, click on the plus sign link, plus signs button. And then you can join the class. Click on join the class and get this password in. Okay. So later it will bring you to my Google Classroom. So we're going to do an activity in this classroom later on. But right now I'm going to like have a recap on urine concentrating mechanism. Okay. So let's talk about the learning outcome. So, learning outcome actually going to reflect what are the important things that you need to know in the topic itself. For example, like when we say urine concentrating mechanisms, it not necessarily like to, to, to make a wonder why do we produce a highly concentrated urine or why do we produce the uh, diluted urine. Urine, the concentrated urine or the diluted urine actually are the parameters to let you know how your kidney doing their, their works. So, when we say about kidney, urine, of course, you can imagine they are the fluids. So, let's recap back. What are the types of fluids that you have in your body? We have the body fluids. Okay, we have a blood. And we have the, what else? We have the cerebral CS, CSF, cerebral, cere cerebral cellular, CSF, cerebral, what is it? Cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, CSF, cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, and then when we say about the fluid itself, okay, so the fluids in our body actually function to give a nutrient and supports to our body systems. So in order to carry out a perfect functions, this fluid needs to have then optimum concentrations, optimum volume. Okay, let's say like we have a what do we call the osmolarity our uh, body fluid osmolarity it is 290 milli osmo per liter if your body fluid or you take a lot of salt for example so the osmolarity will be increased so high concentrations of sodiums in your body fluid will not make your body fluid to function to function well okay similar goes to the blood volume Okay, let's imagine, let's make a simulation. Let's imagine a car, for example. Awak tahu kereta kan? Okay, dalam kereta tu, awak tahu dia ada water coolant system. Okay, ada tak siapa-siapa yang tak tahu water coolant system? So, you can you can chat, eh? Kat sini. Sekejap, I buka button chat lah. I tak nampak. So, siapa yang nak nak chat ke apa ke, you can just uh, drop down your, your chat over there. Okay, so... When we talk about the, uh, sorry, when we talk about the car, for example, so car also using a water coolant system to cool down the engine. So, like, let's say we ride a car for almost one year. When we check back, the water inside the car will be, will be reduced because it is dissipated out or evaporated out. Okay, similar goes to our blood in our body. So, our blood in our body system, in our circulatory systems, also function as a water, water coolant, but in a different way. Because it's on, yes, the radiator. So, in a different way. So, this water coolant system, this circulatory systems, if we're not taking care of it, the volume of the blood itself will be, will be reduced. So, when the volume of the blood itself will be reduced, what will happen to our body? The blood will become thicker or will become more viscose. So if it is more viscose, it cannot carry out its functions well. Okay, so kenapa saya cakap dia macam radiator untuk kulingkan you punya body? 
let's say you having an exercise for example your body will become red so kenapa dia jadi red because your blood vessel is dilated so why it is dilated sebab dia akan dissipate heat so dari kaedah apa yang dia dissipate heat is through radi radiation ingat lagi tak kelas prof mia ada kan how the body <coughs> how the body dissipate dissipate heat okay so now let's move on to the how the kidney carry out its functions in maintaining the water volumes in our body in maintaining the viscosity or the osmolarity of the blood volumes and also the body fluids is via the counter current mechanism so why counter current because counter is in the opposite direction so in the counter current process in in a way to produce the uh, in a way to like uh, maintain the body fluids to maintain the osmolarity of the body fluids the blood volume itself so the kidney to carry out the kidney needs to do two kinds of things which is counter current multiplier and counter current exchanger so do you still remember who carry out their functions for counter current multiplier it is loop of loop of henley for the counter current exchanger it is sorry lagi tak it is wasa Okay, so talking about the uh, counter current process, okay, it's not, if let's say our kidney have this counter current multiplier and has the counter current exchanger, but somehow if let's say our kidney itself not able to produce these very important things, which is the cortico medullary interstitium gradient, so all of these things, all of this homeostasis process will be unavailable. So maksudnya dalam banyak-banyak yang kita cakap ni, one of the most important is the cortico papillary or cortico medullary interstitial gradient. Itu yang paling utama. Okay, why do we talk about the roles of protein and urea? Because protein and urea actually, you take a lot of protein and this protein actually not all will be consumed by our body. Okay, this protein, it will be metabolize into a similar form into a smallest form which is the amino acid and in the chain of the amino acid itself it has the amine, amine ring and this amine ring will not be consumed by our body and should be excreted out so who's going to carry out this uh, these functions so eliminations of the toxic substance is eliminations of the toxic su substance is by the kit kidney but who going to process all of those toxic substance is the liver so all of this process protein this amine ring will be converted by the liver into the ammonia and the ammonia later will be converted into the urea and our kidney will excrete out will filtrate out all 100 percent of the urea that will be produced but even though let's say right now my body my, my glomerulus is filtering 100% of the urea but not 100% of the urea will be filtered out in my urine. Part of the urea, 50% of the urea that has been filtered out will be maintained in the renal medulla. And urea composition itself will contribute to the osmolarity or the higher osmolarity in the renal, renal medulla later. Okay, sebab tu kita kata Kenapa dekat kortiko ataupun dekat cortex, renal cortex, dia punya osmolarity kurang. Tapi kenapa dekat renal medulla, dia punya osmolarity dia lebih. That is because of the presence of the urea at that region. Okay? Alright, so 